Hello all, welcome to the subject of VLSI Design and Technology. I am Professor Vinakshi Panja from Electronics and Telecommunication Department, Parvati Bai Ganma, Mohil College of Engineering, Wahuli, Pune. So today, today in this lecture, we are going to see about digital design issues. Digital design issues. First, see about the introduction of digital design issues. The semiconductor industries are increasing the market of very large scale integrated circuits. In view of this, the design engineer are developing a new techniques for integrated circuits. One such emerging technique is system on a chip design, in which intellectual property blocks, IP codes, or virtual components are combined in a single integrated circuit. Recently, lots of development has been carried out to increase the integrated circuit density. Nowadays, it is possible to design a complete system, for example, complete computer integrated in a single IC chip. The improvement in the IC industry shows that a complete embedded system for software running on a generic processor and expensive hardware can be integrated on the chip. This shows the IC production is now become less cost and effective. So there are a several challenges in a system of chip design. So let's see few of them. Challenges to system of There are several new challenges on SOC. The system model in the system of system of a chip are in C, but system design are in a VHDL, which shows a gap in a designs. The system of chip design should manage the size of the design decisions in the hardware software co-designs. This is the task need structure flow of the design step. Because of the low efficient simulation tools, performing complete system simulation become a problematic. Design flow of system of the design. The system on a chip design starts with the model, which is a functional and free from the implementation detail. The design focus on capturing the algorithmic behavior and allows a functional validation of the descriptions. The architecture information can be added in the design during architecture development. In this step, processing elements are inserted into the system and functional behavior are mapped to the, them. The processing elements are the components for normally generic processors, digital signal processors and hardware peripherals. Once the architecture is developed, the architecture model captures the decisions created in the designs. This model takes only computing time into the account and the communication between the processing elements will be carried out in a zero time. 
the scheduling range from a static scheduling to dynamic scheduling which requires buses and protocols the last step in the synthesis in synthesize the real time code necklist is created for the hardware for the mapping and scheduling is done here the figure shows the design flow of the system of the chip so next c noise margin the logic inverter is the most basic element in the digital integrated circuits it plays a role of parallel to that the amplifier in the analog integrated circuits the logic inverter inverts the logic value at its input signal those for a logic zero input and the output will be logic high and vice versa Here, this figure shows the basic block diagram of digital inverter. When the input voltage V in is low, that is zero volt, the output voltage V out will be high. That is close to VDD. That is close to VDD. Or when the input voltage is high. the output voltage will be low that will connect to ground so this is the operation of the logic inverter the basic properties of this inverter are first one is noise margin second one is power dissipation and third one is propagation delay first one is noise margin second one is power dissipation third one is propagation delay the noise margin of the inverter is shown with the help of voltage transfer characteristics vtc this is the figure of the voltage transfer characteristics which shows the variation of the output voltage with respect to the input voltage here the variation of output voltage with respect to the input voltage if the output of driving inverter is high if this output voltage is high where we safety margin equal to different between voh and vh vih that is the inverter has a noise margin for high input that is nmh which given as your nmh this one is here the nmh is equal to p o h minus v i h similarly if the output of driving inverter is low at v o l the driven inverter will provide a high output even if noise corrupt the v o l 
the level at its input rising it up to VIL. That is the inverter has a noise margin for low input is an ML. This is the noise margin mentioned as an ML that's equal to VIL minus VOL. When the inverter is operated in a steady state, then it does not dissipate any power called static power. Whereas when the switching of the input occurs, the inverter dissipates the power called as dynamic power. Hence the power dissipation of the inverter is depend upon the switching frequency. Also therefore the power dissipation of the inverter is given as PD. This is the power dissipation of the inverter. F is a frequency C VDT whole square, where F is a switching frequency and C is a capacitance, capacitance between the output node and ground. <coughs> VDT is a power supply voltage. The, dy the dynamic behavior of the amplifier is specified in a term of the frequency response where the dynamic behavior of the inverter is characterized in the term of the time delay in between the switching of the input from low to high and high to low and the corresponding change appearing at the output such as the time delay is called as a propulsion. Let's see now what is the fan out. What is fan out? The fan out basically means that the number and the type of the inputs that are to be connected to the output is given a logic gate. If the number of input connected to the output of the given logic gate are moved, then DC noise margin of that logic gate is affected. The fan out also addresses the issues related to the speed at which the output of the logic gate is changes from one state to other state. The fan out is released to the characteristics of the output as well as it is also related to the number of the input. It is a driving from the given logic gate. Fan out is examined in about the logic low and the logic high status. In the system level designs, the loading effects on the block blocks and buses is considered from the fan out. In the circuit design, the logic low state and the logic high state calculation are made to justify the fan out requirement of the circuit. The next topic is clock, clock view. The clock skew is defined as the variation in the arriving time of the clock transition in the integrated circuit. The clock skew between two points X and Y in a semiconductor IC, which is given by, which is given by theta, which can be represented by theta X comma Y, that's equal to, that equal to T, T, X, minus 
E Y. Where T X and T Y are the position of the rising edge of the clock with respect to the reference. Consider the data transfer between the register one and register two. I will show in the figure with the clock diagram. Here, this is the figure. Here, register one, register two. Data transfer in between both the registers will be X space. In this system, the routing direct decides the whether the clock skew is positive or negative. Here, this figure shows the timing diagram of the positive skew. It can be observed that the clock edge is delayed by the positive D time here. The clock, positive clock edge is delayed by the this D time. Clock one here, clock one and clock two. After one clock one, a small amount of delay will be introduced to trigger this clock four. The skew is mainly because of the static mismatch in the clock. That is, if one cycle of clock two lag of this clock one by theta, when in the next cycle will be lagged by the same amount here. Next cycle will be lagged by the same amount. So this is about the clock scale. So next see timing consideration. In the digital system design, high level represents the logic high and low level of the voltage represents the logic low. When the digital signal changes the state from logic 0 to 1 or when sig signals changes the state from logic 1 to 0, it takes a finite amount of delay. There are two types of delay. First delay is Inertial delay or we can say that switching switching delay. And second one is propagation delay. Or we can we can say transport transport delay. So first see inertial delay or switching delay. The inertial delay or the switching delay are defined as the time interval between the input change and the output change. And propagation delay or transport delay is nothing but the propagation delay or the transport delay are defined as the time interval between the generation at the signal at the output of the gate and the arrival of the signal at the input of the gate. Let us take the example of NAND gate. The input of NAND gate are A and B. Let me draw the NAND gate. I will draw roughly here of land gate. This is the land gate which is having input A and B and output C. 
so according to this we will see the clock diagram or delay diagram this is the delay diagram which is having input a b and c with the delay and c with the zero delay and c with the unity delay so let's see the zero delay the zero delay is the delay in which it is assumed that all the gates and interconnection involved in the circuit are having no delay therefore the changes happened in the signal are determined by the logic function except here with zero delay here what will happen there is a no delay suddenly change will be here can be assumed in second unity delay is the delay in which it is assumed that the gate is having the unity delay and the interconnect involved in the circuit have no delay this is about the zero delay and unity delay let's see the next topic is hazards so what are the hazards we will see i will write here the name of the topic h a r it is a sequential circuit and it is necessary that the unwanted disturbance such as a glitches should not occur on the signal the unwanted disturbance such as a glitches caused by in the circuit and the disturbances caused because of the delay are called hazards delay there are two types of in this type of delay first one is a static second one is dynamic hazard static hazard the static hazard is mainly because of the signal is staying in the same state for example if it is in a logic state zero then after after some delay it will stay on logic zero this kind of delay this is the zero this is one which is mainly the signal is staying in a same state here the figure shows the first one is static hazard it will change for certain time then after it will be remain at particular state only it can be seen that the signal is the logic zero but rise suddenly but rise suddenly to the logic one for the short time similarly the signal is at the logic but falls but falls suddenly to the logic low for short time this type of the hazard is called as a static hazard so let's see another type which is a dynamic hazard so what will happen in this type the dynamic hazard occur when there is a transition from logic zero to logic high or there is a transition from logic one to logic zero will be changed so here so this kind of for example this is state zero and one and this is zero 
this kind transaction will be takes place so we can write like this also this figure clearly seen that when there is a transition from 1 to 0 logic 1 to 0 sudden glitch lead to dynamic hazard similarly there is a transition from logic 0 to 1 right sudden glitch leads the dynamic to again from 1 to 0 the good chip designer tries to make the hazard free the kind of circuit inserted into the design to make is a hazard free is called as hazard free circuit normally in the combinational circuit design the output of the logic circuit is totally depend upon the inputs therefore the efforts required to make the system hazard free is less on the other hand in a sequential circuit the designs the input signals depend upon the timing of the inputs and the input signal in the sequential circuit should be in the setup and hold time of the flip flop used in the design let's see the another topic which is called as clock distribution this distribution in order to control the clock skew the clock distribution techniques are used the main problem in a clock distribution is the availability of the capacitance which plays important role in a clocked system therefore the normally in the clock line semiconductor integrated circuits the integrated circuits designers put a significant efforts to minimize the gate capacitance in order to produce the sharp transition the clock distribution is a challenging task for the large capacitive load here the figure in this figure this figure shows the simple map of the clock delay versus positions in this map the height on the surface shows the clock delay the height of the surface shows the clock delay the various techniques used to improve the clock distributions there are i will going to write one by one here first technique is a physical design so in this technique the layout of the semiconductor integrated circuit is designed in a such a way that the clock delay is minimum so next one is circuit in a circuit design technique the circuits driving the clock distribution are designed in a such a way that the clock delay is minimum here this figure shows 
here this figure shows h tree in this case the width are adjusted in a such a way that the variation in a load capacitance are as minimum as possible further the width are also adjusted in a such a way that the skew throughout the h tree is equal further in order to increase the drive capability buffers are also added in the h tree network the h tree network is considered as a top drawn technique in which the floor plan of the h tree finds the floor plan of the logic however the h tree when the memory elements are grouped together the clock skew increase in the with physical distance here the another figure here the another figure shows the balanced tree clock network created by using a placement and routing in an integrated circuit in this case the clustering is used to guide the placement in order to minimize the clock skew and be balanced So let's see one phase system for flip flop. Flip flops. The one phase system is the clocking discipline made up of flip flop. Consider the flip flop system in the figure. I will show in the next slide. Here, this is the figure. This system consists consists of clock signal phi and the data signal S. Here, the clock signal phi phi and data signal is S. At the input side, the flip flop are rising edge of the clock. The stable value are reached at the flip flop output. Further, after the clock edge, the primary inputs of the flip flop changes in the intervals. In this case, the clock period is arranged in a such a way that the further signals are propagated from primary input to the flip flops. If the primary input satisfies these conditions, then the flip flops are latched to the state values. So, two phase system. We have seen one phase system. Now, see. Let's see two phase system for the latches. In a two phase system, flip flop cutting the combinational circuits are used to latch the power values. In order to understand the two phase system for the latches, consider the signal latch here in this figure. Which shows we can see there is an existence of the relationship between delay through the system and the clock signal. As long as the latch clock signal is high, the latch is transparent. The improved architecture of the two-phase clocking system shown in a figure.
So let's see clock jitter, which is defined as the temporal variation in the clock period of the clock waveform. Due to the clock jitter, the clock period of the clock can be reduced or increased. The clock jitter shows the temporal uncertainty in the semiconductor integrated circuits. In order to measure the clock jitter, various techniques are used. The clock jitters are mainly the time varying deviation of the single clock period for the special location. X clock jitter is given as T jitter. So I will show in a figure. Here the clock jitter Xn is equal to Tx n plus 1 minus Txn minus T clock, where the T x and T T x and n is the clock period for the period n. You T x and T n is a clock period for the period n. And Tx n plus 1 is the clock period for the period time of clock period, first period and second period. For second period, it will become n plus 1. Then Tclk is the nominal for the clock period. This Tclk is the nominal for the clock period. The presence of clock jitter in an integrated circuit reduces the performance of the sequential digital integrated circuits. Here shown in the clock period variation due to clock jitter. Here the clock period start at the edge second and the end edge five with the clock period of T C L K. Therefore, the total time to complete the operation given by in this equation. This is the equation. This is all about clock jitter. In the next in the next lecture, we will see supply and the ground bonds, power optimization, power distribution techniques, and interconnected routing techniques, wire parasitics, design validation, and many more. So this is enough for the day. Thank you.